Yo what's going on guys, so I'm here, now today we're gonna check out three different gold farms on Sandalar. So the first one is in Voldoon, this is the farm that I do very much myself, I do this like every single day for a couple of hours. And you can easily make 150k plus on these farms, even without having decent RNG. Let's just take into consideration you get one epic every four hours of doing this farm. Then you would get roughly 100-250k per hour because you also pick up tailoring, and each of the mobs you kill in, in these farms, like every single farm on Sandalar, has humanoids. And if you're a tailor, you're gonna loot extra cloth from the humanoids, which you can then turn into 300 item level gear, or it can proc 310 and be worth even more. And you can also sell the cloth on the auction house for pure profit as well. Let's just check out the farm that I'm currently doing right now on the screen. If I, I can just show you on the map where I'm at, so I'm down southwest in Vuldoon, and I'm killing these Sephrak mobs, they have a chance of dropping the Vuldoon, what am I saying, the Dune Scavenger. They have a chance of dropping the captured Dune Scavenger, which is a high in amount, and you can also get epics that has like a 1 in 10,000 drop chance I think. Nobody really knows the drop chance, but for me, I usually get 1 every 4 to 5 hours, depending on my luck obviously. Sometimes I can go 10 hours without getting a single one, or I can get 3 of them in 1 hour. It all depends on your RNG, but the first time I did this it took me 16 hours to get the mount, and then I got 2 mounts in 2 hours. So, you know, it's all RNG, it all depends on how lucky you are. But I'm farming down southwest in Vuldoon, and we're killing roughly 2,000-2,500 mobs per hour. This also depends on the DPS of your group, because the faster you kill the mobs, the faster they respawn. They are set on... you have to have a certain amount of mobs up at all times, because they are involved in a quest. The Horde people quest in this zone and in this place. So these mobs are, are co like connected to a quest, so there has to be a certain amount of mobs up at all times. So the faster you kill the mobs, the faster they respawn. And this seems to be the case for the other farms as well, but I can, I can show you the other two right now, or one of them at least. So if we go over to Nasmir, and you go towards, I, I would say west, it's in the Terrace of Sorrows. And you can farm these blood trolls, there are also these skeleton kind of Sandalar raptors around as well. I would just pull those as well, I mean it's kind of like you have to, because there's one blood troll and one raptor next to each other, and if you pull one, the other one gets pulled as well. And even though the raptors can't really drop the mount, the, the tame, the blood feaster I think it's called, that drops in Nasmir from blood trolls, the raptors, I don't think they can drop that one, but the blood trolls can, and the raptors can drop epics. So the more raptors you kill, the higher chance you have of getting an epic, and the more blood trolls you kill, the more chance you have of getting both an epic and the mount. So just kill everything around here and set up the monk statue. You want to have a tank, a monk tank for the statue in all of these farms, because it's just going to make it all the more effective. Because you can then pull all the mobs around the statue, towards the statue, and then you can just AoE them down with cleave, whatever, starfall, whatever you want to pull them with, you can just... Use that on the statue, and there you go, easy DPS. So you just put the statue on the shrine, I think we're going to call this. Just put it on the shrine, so it pulls the blood trolls over there. And then you want to have at least two range, so they can pull on each side. And pull the mobs towards the statue, so if you're a boomkin, just use starfire, or moonfire, whatever. And just pull the mobs, and then run back towards the statue, and when you get in line of sight of the statue, the statue will pull the mobs from you. And you shouldn't take that much damage, but for the Nasmir farm I would go with the healer, but for the other two I would just have DPS and a monk tank, because you shouldn't really take any damage unless you're melee. Because if you're in melee you would take some cleave damage, but if you're a range you shouldn't take any damage whatsoever, except in the Nasmir farm because the blood trolls give you some sort of dot that makes you take damage. But that's it for the Nasmir farm, let's go over to the Suldasar farm now. So if you go over to Suldasar, you go to the Blood Gate, which I can show you on the map as well. And there are like troll mobs there, this farm is alliance only I should tell you. And there's like 10 mobs, 10 to 12 mobs are up. And they are also in, in, on an instant spawn timer, so the, the faster you kill them, the faster they respawn. And this might be the highest respawn farm out there right now. It all depends on your DPS though, because these mobs have a bit more health than the other mobs, because the Sethrak mobs that I showed you in Vuldoon, they only have like 44k health, I think, roughly 44k. These mobs have, some of them have 70k and some have 100k, so you need to have quite high DPS to make this one really worth it, because the higher DPS you have, the faster they respawn, 
and they're in a pack of 10, so they're going to respawn constantly. And you want to have sick DPS, sick AoE DPS to kill them as fast as possible, to get as many kills per hour to have higher chance of looting an epic. So yeah, if you do this with a decent group, decent AoE group, you should be getting one epic every four hours. And if you want to increase the amount of gold you get, then pick up tailoring, because all the mobs, except in the <laughs> Nasmir, they're going to be some raptors, but usually you're killing humanoids. Humanoids drop cloth. If you're a tailor, you're going to get extra cloth. You can turn that into gear or sell the cloth itself and make roughly 30 to 40 to 50k per hour, depending on your luck when you craft gear or if you sell the cloth itself. So you're going to make anywhere from 20 to 50k per hour only by picking up tailoring. And then you're going to make whatever you make by picking up the epics as well, depending on if you pick up a shit pair of cloth boots, which is worth like 100k on my server at least. Or if you pick up a Warforge socketed two-handed sword, which will sell for 1.5 million. It's all depending on your RNG and how lucky you are, but roughly this farm should net you 100 to 200k per hour, depending on your luck once again. But even with shitty luck... You should be getting, let's say you have the worst luck possible, you'll get like 75 to 80k per hour. If you get like the cloth boots, which is worth like 100k, and you get those every 4 hours, that's going to be 25k per hour. And then you make 50k per hour by tailoring, that's 75k, with getting the worst epic you can get every 4 hours. And if you farm this for one entire day, the chance of getting those cloth boots every time you loot an epic is extremely low. But yeah, if you want to get rich, then I would advise doing this farm. And if you have any other farms like this which is insane, then don't even tell me about them. Just keep them to yourself. Because if you tell me about them, people will know. And the more people who know about them, the worse it is. Because if Blizzard finds out about any of these farms and how OP they are, they will nerf them. If you remember what happened to the Vuldun farm, the temple farm, they nerfed that one after like 48 hours of finding out. It was nerfed to the ground. The mobs just stopped uh, spawning. And the same happened on the Alliance side as well with the Terrified Pack Mule. It just, the mobs stopped spawning. So if you have any sick spots, then don't tell anyone. Keep it to yourself and just farm it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get rich and peace out.